What's going on guys, my name is Matt and I'm gonna help you automate your fitness business. Today, we're going through how to set up Go High Level with Trainerize. Now, if you haven't used Trainerize before or if you're like trying to find out more information to it, this is just gonna be a simple way how we can connect uh, Go High Level to then start onboarding people into Trainerize. So, the, you know, assign them a program, create them as a, a user, that kind of thing. If you are wondering like, is this the right program for me, like Trainerize, if it's, you know, trying to get a bit of bias on it, um, in my opinion, it's really good for automation. It's decent for client uh, delivery. Uh, however, it's just not the best thing for specific like coaching. Like if you're a high level powerlifting coach or you're like a, a high level bodybuilding coach and you need specific things, it may not be the best thing for you. Um, However, for most people, it's pretty damn good. So what we are going to do first is inside Go High Level, we either need a form or a survey, essentially ways to capture information. So in this situation, I'm going to use survey because we're gonna be going through setting up an onboarding form. Um, it will allow us to you know, segment um, each question one by one. I think that's more beneficial when it comes to um, gathering information because it's not as tedious as like having a big massive form that deters people from filling it out properly. So first thing we're going to do is set up a survey and we're going to call this one onboarding, <laughs> onboarding, if I can spell correctly, survey. Now in this um, survey you can go as deep or as shallow as you kind of really like. If you are delivering a one-on-one -on -one coaching service where you you know work um, with people bespoke, then you may wanna go deeper in this. If you just uh, deliver like simple training programs or something like that, then you may not need to go as specific. However, the, you can always go more, you can't go less. So I would always recommend having um, more uh, information than less. So the first thing I have is full name and then email and then phone number. Now. I'm just gonna get rid of the disclaimer there for a minute, but you do need that if it's your intake form. And we are going to look at some potential custom fields. So obviously in fitness onboarding, again, we're all gonna have different questions, but the generic ones are like, how much do you weigh? How much do you weigh? And that can be contact. And we're gonna save that. And if we look down at additional info now, if we type in weigh, it'll come up. Um, how much do you weigh? Fantastic. And then we're gonna type in, we're gonna, sorry, we're gonna add another field, which is how tall are you? And then how tall are you? And we're gonna put that in the contact. <clears throat> so these two questions and our like full name and details is probably enough for us to start onboarding people. Um, the reason why you would go further and ask more questions is to you know get more specific outcomes in trainer. Right? So if you wanted to start delivering programs, all that kind of stuff, uh, you can do that too. So um, like specific ones to goals. I'll explain that later. So we jump in and press save and we're gonna go back to um, the main page and then we're gonna need to jump into automation because we need to take the survey information and then send that to um, Zapier first so that it can then be delivered to Trainerize. Now the reason I'm using Zapier and not like make.com is because to my knowledge, make.com doesn't have a pre-built Trainerize module. Uh, you need to use API calls for that. If you don't have the studio plan of Trainerize, um, at all the pro plan and above, you won't be able to make those API calls. Um, story for another day. <clears throat> so we've got our new workflow and we're just gonna call it sending info information to TZ and then bracket Zapier. And then we're gonna press got it. And all we need to do is go add a new trigger, survey, survey submitted, add filter, survey is onboarding survey. We're gonna save the trigger. What we are then gonna do is add a webhook. However, we need to go into Zapier first and set up the receiving webhook before we can you know, send it out from here. <clears throat> so our trigger is going to be a webhook by Zapier. And if we let that load. And then the choose event is going to be catch a hook. Because with webhooks, think of it like fishing. Um, right now, go high level is the person with the fishing rod and it's gonna be casting a, a hook and then the Zapier is gonna be a fish grabbing onto it on the other side. Cool. So 
When we press continue, once we've selected catch hook, uh, we're not gonna pick off a child key, we're just gonna press continue, and it's gonna say we're listening. Then it's gonna give you this URL at the top, at the top here. You're gonna copy that, and then put that inside our webhook um, module in Go High Level. So we've pressed the plus, we've searched the actions for webhook. You don't need to use custom webhook for this. You can save a little bit of money and just use a standard webhook. Now, webhook is gonna stay the same, or you can change the name. Uh, let's just call it Zapier TZ webhook, so Zapier Trainerized webhook. The method is post, so you're gonna be posting it, which is in this case, casting it. And then our URL is going to be paste. Now, one thing that Go High Level does is you don't need to deliver any custom data in the webhook because by default, it sends all of the information on the contact that it has. So if you've got previously answered questions, if you've got your onboarding questions, it's all gonna be delivered in that webhook and it's gonna be delivered across. So if you have um, any specific things you want to be sent, uh, you don't have to specify it because it comes through anyway. Cool. So. The next step here is going to be a save first and test a trigger. If you ever test a webhook in GHL and wondering why it's not working, it's probably because you haven't saved at the top. So what we are going to do is I'm going to actually go back and open up the survey and test it that way uh, so you, can go, you guys can see it kind of in action. And then we can kind of move on to the next step. So with the onboarding survey, um, you can just preview or share um, most of the time, preview won't actually trigger the. Um, it won't actually trigger the. What's it called? Um, contact update. So let's just take a look. But if it doesn't, then um, I've had instances before where it doesn't actually work properly. So let's just give it a test. And uh, how much do you weigh? Let's say 100 kilos. How tall are you? We're going to go 182 centimeters. Uh, email field, oops, how'd I miss that? Submit, and once we are done, we've submitted that, let's see if it actually works. So if we go into Zapier now and test the trigger, it's gonna tell us there's no information. All right, cool. So in order to test that properly with this survey, you would need to go in and like add it to a site and then publish the site and then fill out the information. Um, another way you can do it is just by opening up the automation and then sending the contact details to um, the automation. So if we go onboarding, um, what did I call it? I'm pretty sure I called it onboarding. Um, should just be in here. Ah, here we go. Sending information to Trainerize API. Sweet. So what I'm going to do now is go. Oh, I didn't have it published. That's why it didn't work. Anyway, <laughs> let's. Go with the flow. So I'm going to select contact Matt Lamb, uh, Matt at knockonautomation.com, run test. We'll look at the enrollment history and make sure that it's actually completed it. So it says it's completed here, it's finished. And then if we test this, oops, we go test trigger, we should be able to get the information. Fantastic. So we've got all of this information here, we've got my details that I entered in. Let's see if it has the custom data. Yeah, cool, it does. So how tall are you? 182 centimeters. Uh, how much do you weigh? 100. Fantastic. So we're going to continue with that selected record and then we're going to move on to Trainerize. So we're going to type in Trainerize here and our event is obviously the first one that we're going to do is um, create a client. So we are going to type in create and the first option is create an update client v2. Uh, we're going to press continue and I've got a um, client account on here. So I'm just going to, actually is it? It might be mine. Might be an old one, doesn't matter. Um, and we're going to jump in and like select the details of the user. So why is it not giving us no matches found? Interesting. Let's just make sure that this is working. Con continue with selected record. Continue, continue. That's super interesting. No matches found. Insert data if I type in Matt. All right, well. We love little bugs. So <laughs> in this situation, you would be able to catch webhook and you'll be able to type in, uh, you would be able to like leave the field of the user's name. So if, uh, if this happens to you, reach out to me and we can probably troubleshoot it together. But the end goal is going to have the information here, right? We're going to go knock on automation.com. First name will be Matt. And then the other details I had is Lamb. Cool. And then we can go through and 
input the other information that is required. So client status is you would choose active, client type is whatever you offer. So if you go full access, it's just like one-on-one -on -one communication, then that's fine. Um, and then you, these are some other questions that you can dive a bit deeper into. So if you collect gender, you can, you can choose sex. If you um, have activity level, you can also collect this as well. So this will just allow you to do more inside trainerize once you've got this information, right? Now, if you are then, you'll be able to put select trainer. I'm not gonna go into that because it'll bring up um, some information. And you'll be able to like subscribe to main program and get someone pretty much up and running from the jump. Now, if you just did that, um, I'm gonna skip this test. If you just created the uh, client information, you can go in and assign a specific training program if you wanted to. So if we go back into Trainerize, and then we go into, what's it called? Assign a program? No, wait, where's program? Subscribe to main program, copy master program to client. Yeah, this is what we would look at doing. So a copy master program to a client. And <clears throat> the reason why is because if you just subscribe them to the main program, you can't go back and change that. So if you, um, if you wanted to be able to make edits to the program, you wanna copy the program to them. So this is just a little bit of how Trainerize works. If you, yeah, if you don't care and they just need to follow a set program, like a challenge or something like that, then that's fine. But if you need to be able to make edits to it, then it's change the program. Uh, sorry, it's copy the program to it. So you can select a master program, you can type in their email, um, and then you can say starts on immediately. Now this is a very, very simple way that you can just start bringing people from GHL to Trainerize. Now, more things can be done inside um, Goha level to eliminate the use of Trainerize. Now before I mentioned the Trainerize API. If you have not got the API access, this is probably not for you anyway. If you're looking at building something with the API, this may help you um, because you can communicate directly with the Trainerize API with uh, Go High Level. Now, there's a couple of things you're gonna need to know. We're going to be using a custom webhook, right? Um, and if we look at this, we're gonna just call this TZ API. And there's a few things that I'm, I'm just gonna run through this and then what you can kind of do is interpret it yourself. <laughs> so what we're gonna go is event is custom, that's fine. Um, we're gonna change that to post. And the URL is where the Trainerize URL is hosted. If you don't have um, access to this uh, URL, it is because you haven't got access to the actual API. For an example, I'm just gonna write trainerize.com forward slash API. Um, and then we're going to say uh, add client. This is an example URL, this is not the actual URL. The authorization is basic auth, um, and what that means is basically you'll have a username and you will have a password. This will be delivered to you by Trainerize. The username is usually like, I think it's five or six characters, and the basic auth uh, password is something long and it kind of looks like this. What you can then do <coughs> is add in uh, your headers, which for this situation, you're going to need application, pretty sure it needs to be it, application forward slash JSON. Uh, oh no, sorry, that goes in here. <laughs> and it's gonna be content type is application JSON. Uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head if you need anything else. Um, gonna leave that for a minute. You might need another header, but that's all in the documentation. And then you can add in a body, which has information as well, right? So this is just, I'm, I'm trying to not give away any information that I'm not licensed to give away. So I'm just keeping it simple. Um, but you can do it in here, and it is 100% possible, and it can be done. So again, that's just a little bit extra tidbit on the actual um, Trainerize API. And this is all you really need to get started sending programs from Go High Level to Trainerize. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you found it valuable. Um, if you have any other specific questions about Trainerize and Go High Level, then leave them in the comments below.